Good morning. Good morning. My name is Absalom Bowling, and today I have the distinct honor of introducing the dynamic leader of our nation's capital. She is a native Washingtonian who understands our city, and more importantly, our community, and how to improve it. One of the ways that she has improved our community Sorry, I'm trying to just do that again. <laughs> well, again. Oh. Okay, well, one of the ways that she has improved our community is by making Ron Brown College Preparatory High School a reality. She made sure that we had an outstanding principal, amazing teachers and staff, and a newly renovated facility. Starting today, it will be our turn, the Young Kings to learn, lead, perform, and demonstrate that her efforts and the efforts of her team to smooth our transition from children into men has been a resounding success. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please stand and give a round of applause as I introduce the mayor of the soon-to-be 51st state, hey! <laughs> Mayor Muriel Bowser. about that young king. I like that. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Ron Brown College Preparatory High School right here in Washington, D.C. It gives me great pleasure to welcome all of you uh, to this beautiful school. Uh, it will bring me even greater pleasure for you to meet some of our outstanding young men. And let's give a great round of applause to Absalom Bowling. Is that our uniform principal? Yep. It's outstanding. Uh, let me also acknowledge great partners in education with us, uh, Council Member David Grasso, who is the at-large council member and the chairman of the council's education committee. Give David a big round of applause. The chairman of the council, Phil Mendelson, is here, who has taken great interest in moving all of DCPS forward. Give Chairman Mendelson a round of applause as well as uh, the Deputy Mayor for Education, Jennifer Niles, who is here. Thank you, Jenny. And I uh, want to acknowledge our great leader and principal. We uh, know that our, our friends at the Department of General Services, DGS, has worked really hard to get this building ready, and we want to thank all of our staff, and our director is here, Greer Gillis. Greer, where are you? Right in the front, and her entire team, Jeff, Jeff Bonvecchio, and the entire construction team. Give them a big round of applause. But I want to uh, save a special thank you for our Chancellor of Schools, Kaya Henderson, who had a remarkable vision uh, to make sure that we're moving all of our children forward in DCPS. And part of that remarkable vision has been a focus on empowering males of color. And we see truly the embodiment of that vision here at Ron Brown focusing on how we d will develop our young men academically, socially, and get them ready to be the fathers and young men that will lead our city forward. And that is the type of learning that will he happen here at Ron Brown Preparatory High School. I also want to thank uh, the chancellor for really seeing through one of, uh, I think, a signature achievement that I'm so happy about because um, this is my dad called me. And when my dad calls me, it's a good thing. Uh, he said, you know, I saw in the news that those kids were going back to school early. That is great. They're, they are sending those kids back to school early. And I said, that is great that they're doing that, Dad. 11 schools across the District of Columbia had extended school year start just a few weeks ago. And those young people are going to have 20 days, 30 days, 20 days, additional days of learning here at DCPS. Just yesterday, was it Friday, I went to Roosevelt Senior High School 
the children at Roosevelt had not walked through the front door of that building in 25 years because it had fallen into such disrepair. But this morning, they walked in the front door. And not only did they walk in the front door, they went into a curriculum focused on world studies. And they joined their middle school colleagues across DCPS who will have an international experience. <laughs> because of their DCPS participation. And the children at Roosevelt will have that experience every single year. And we get that type of achievement and progress when we have had the outstanding leadership of Chancellor Kaya Henderson. She likes to remind me for a long time. Not that long, because she's still so young. So Chancellor, please stand up and be recognized for your great service. So with that, I am going to turn over the program and all the responsibilities of being the MC to the Chancellor of Schools, Kaya Henderson. It's a great day at DCPS, folks. Uh, happy first day of school. I'm really excited to be here. Uh, as the mayor shared, we have a number of folks out here celebrating, and I would love to invite uh, the chair of the Education Committee, um, who has been an amazing partner for us, an amazing supporter. We could not have done all of this without him. Uh, chairman David Grasso to come and say a few words. Come on up, Chairman. Well, good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you all for coming out, and thanks for inviting me to be out here. Uh, Mayor Bowser, this is definitely an exciting day uh, to uh, start this wonderful opportunity for an education here in the District of Columbia for your, our young males of color. Uh, we've been uh, working on this now for a little over a year, um, working through all of the different complications that, it, that arise to try to do what's right here in the District of Columbia. Uh, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to show my support. Uh, because I strongly believe that the District of Columbia education system has to double down and refocus our efforts on equity and on making sure that every student in the District of Columbia has an opportunity to succeed in our schools. So uh, I'm excited to be here. I'm glad to see uh, Chairman Mendelson out as well, who's also been a strong supporter of this program and this school. And I also want to publicly thank uh, Chancellor Henderson for her amazing vision and her work in the city and the District of Columbia school system to put us where we are today, which I believe is in a great position to succeed uh, moving forward in the city to, to the next step and the next phase, which is, I think, uh, incredible greatness and possibly very soon the best school system in the entire world. Um, so uh, with that, I, I just wanted to come here. I wanted to show my support, uh, express my support, and continue to tell you that as long as I'm on the council, I'll be supporting this school and looking forward to Principal Williams and all of the students' great accomplishments over the years to come. So um, thank you very much, and uh, enjoy this weather as well. Thank you. Thank you. Great organizations need great leaders. I know a little bit as, about that. Um, and I've been really blessed to have great leadership in Mayor Bowser. She's done amazing things to support our dreams, all of our dreams, our collective dreams for our young people. But this leader of this campus is an amazing young man named Dr. Ben Williams. And I'm really pleased that right here in our own school district, we have leaders who can make the dream happen. He's previously been an assistant principal uh, over at School Without Walls at Francis Stevens, and we learned of his work. And when it became time to think about leadership for this school, we selected him, and I couldn't think of a finer choice. And so I would love to invite Dr. Williams up to give a few words of welcome. Mayor Bowser, Chancellor Henderson, Councilman Grosso, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to speak today. Absalon, you already have set the stage, uh, set the standard very high for the young men that are in that building right now. I think that's our future valedictorian. <laughs> Great job. What a wonderful, wonderful day it is to be a monarch. Absolutely wonderful day. The weather couldn't have been better. Our young kings came in today ready to learn in their beautiful uniforms. And yes, this is our uniform. So all of our kings are walking around in jacket and ties today. 
Uh, as the inaugural principal for Ron Brown College Preparatory High School, I want to first say welcome to this historical moment. And I want to thank the two of you. You've given me an opportunity to achieve a lifelong dream. I did not think that this was going to be possible for me in the first 36 years of my life. I thought this was going to be the last hoorah of my career. And you have given me this opportunity to affect not only the 120 or 110 kings that we have in this room right now, but hopefully eventually 600 kings. And what we want to do is not only give them an opportunity to compete once they leave our doors, but also to give them an opportunity to understand that there are people in this city, especially people in this community, that care that they can feel loved and can have a loving environment where they can feel that they can excel. We spent the summer coming together. We had two different retreats. We had one retreat where we brought all of our staff members together to really to talk about how do we change the narrative? How do we get kings to understand that they have the possibility to change the narrative? We had to first focus on mindset shift. And it wasn't about my, resetting the mindset, ah, sorry, resetting the mindset of our kids, we first had to look at ourselves as adults and see what we have been doing wrong in our school settings. And we had to reset our mindset first, be vulnerable with each other, so we can model that excellence for our kings. I'm extremely excited about this mission. I thank you all for coming out here today and supporting our kings. Um, it's going to be a wonderful year, and it's going to be a wonderful four years for our kings, and they're going to have the opportunity to experience many different things. There's one quote that we have been expressing to our kings from the very first day. W.E.B. Du Bois once said, now is the accepted time, not tomorrow, not some more convenient season. And our motto for the year, Absalon, and some of our staff members, I'm going to shout it out, please do the call and response. We are all in. Thank you very much. So as you've heard, this is a dream come true for a lot of us. There were so many people who, over a year ago when we announced this, didn't think it could be done. Um, they didn't think that we could put together an amazing collegiate preparatory school for our young men. Um, but as DCPS has been doing over the last few years, we will continue to defy expectations. There were people out here, even last night, saying, well, the building is not done. Well, the building is done for these 100 kids, and we're preparing the next levels for the future kings that we'll invite back to the, that's all right, I don't need it. We'll make it happen. Um, <clears throat> And so I just want you to know that that doesn't happen just because we will it to happen. As the mayor said, we have so many partners who have made this work possible from our DGS colleagues who literally have built the most amazing building. I would be thrilled to send my son here. Um, to the mayor who's provided the resources that we need. To our philanthropic partners who threw in with us. I see community partners in the back who have stood in the gap for our young men, who will mentor, who will tutor, who will be here, to the most amazing staff ever. Um, it takes all of us to ensure that our young people have this kind of school. And when I say this kind of school, I mean a kind of school that you want to send your kid to. The kind of school that's not just teaching reading and math, but as I walk through the halls this morning in the English language arts class, they're talking about who Ron Brown was, right? Because this name is significant. This name actually represents black excellence, black male excellence. And so they're learning about their history so that they can be prepared for the future. I walked into a math class where there were three teachers teaching math to ensure that our young people get not just the broad attention that they need, but the individualized attention that they need. They'll see sports, they'll see extracurricular activities. We will provide them with the very best education possible. And for that, we're really proud this morning. But Ron Brown is not the only new program that we have opening for our young people. In fact, all across the city, we're committed to continuing to give our young people the kind of education that they deserve. As the mayor mentioned, we're opening um, a re restarted Roosevelt High School that's focused on international and global studies and reopening, reopening McFarland. Uh, we said that we would reopen schools that we had closed when we got the academic program together and could get the amount of kids in the building. And so I'm really excited about McFarland and, and Roosevelt. We're also opening our first dual language school east of the river and more to come at Houston Elementary School where those babies will be learning in English and Spanish so that they can go out and compete in an increasingly globalized world. We'll continue to add languages. We're also 
opening some new career academies um, at HD Woodson, an engineering and renewable energy academy because we want our young people to get jobs. The jobs for the new economy, many of which are right here in our city and in our region, but we hadn't been preparing our young people to take advantage of. That will change. We're also opening an IT academy at H.D. Uh, Woodson and at Anacostia this year, we're opening in conjunction with our amazing partners, the Metropolitan Police Department, um, a public safety academy where we'll train our own young people from our own communities to go into our police force, our other law enforcement agencies, because we know that when our police officers have relationships with the community, we get better policing. And I want to take my hat off to Chief Lanier for the amazing job that she's done and for the MPD Foundation which has provided us with the resources and opportunities to be able to graduate kids from DCPS from Anacostia they will go straight into the cadet program which is a $60,000 gig and they will their college will be paid for in preparation for them to become police department police officers that is the kind of education that our kids deserve one that sets them up for life one that allows them to take care of their families one that allows them to stay right here in Washington DC and contribute back to the community that has given so much to them um, finally I'll say I'm super excited about this year because uh, we're doing something very different for our teachers we know that our teachers are the most important in-school factor in moving student achievement. And we've done a lot for our teachers over the years, from raise their salaries and give them bonus opportunities um, to try to provide them with the kind of support that they need. But this year, we're starting an intensive professional development program called LEAP, where teachers will get weekly support and instruction in their classrooms, not pulling them out to go to some workshop that might be random or what have you, but planning with other teachers, getting the content help that they need, and it's going to be a game changer in terms of raising student achievement in the district. So I always say it's the most wonderful time of the year, the first day of school. Some people think that's Christmas, <laughs> but for educators, that is the first day of school. And the level of energy and excitement across DCPS is amazing. I was at the Costco yesterday, right? Costco is my informal polling place, right? And if I walk through to Costco and can get through, right, that's a good day. I couldn't get through to Costco yesterday because so many people were stopping me to tell me about how excited they were about the first day of school or where their child was going or how proud they are of things that are happening in DC public schools. And when you can walk through to Costco and people are happy with you, right? You know the lines at the Costco are long, but I was chit-chatting in line with people. I saw a print principals at Costco, buying breakfast bars to hand to every kid at school. It was just an amazingly incredible and energetic time. And I think that you all should be energized and excited and enthusiastic um, because we're DCPS and we are rising and we will continue to rise. We'll continue. We've set a completely different story about what's happening here and we will continue to make that happen. And Ron Brown is just one small example. So. With that, I want to thank you for coming out this morning. I, I also want to thank our community, um, our community cabinet. I think it's really important to help people understand that we believe that in order to do this, we have to do this work with our community. And there's been a dedicated group of parents, educators, community members, advocates who have been working with us for the last year to establish this school. And if you're on the community cabinet, would you please raise your hand or stand up so that we can appropriately appreciate you for all the work. They're standing in the back. They should be up here in the front. But thank you to the community cabinet for all of the work that you've done, and they will continue to support us. That's just how we do business nowadays. With that, I guess we'll take some questions. Who's? Sure. Before we do that, I'm just going to ask the chairman to acknowledge everybody. Chairman Mendelson. Thank you, Mayor Bowser. Thank you, Chancellor Henderson. Thank you all for being here. I guess I will have to be very brief. Uh, let me say this, you know, the first day of school is always a very exciting day, and we see that with the attention here. It's really not so much about the press conference as it is what's going on in the schools, and what's going on in the schools each year is this is a new year, a fresh start. It's a lot like opening day with baseball or opening day with other major sports. 
except of course the academic mission is more important. Um, and also a big difference is, well the similarity is the excitement around opening day, but the big difference is that what we've seen over the last half decade is significant improvement in our team, namely DCPS, or what did you call it? Uh, DCPS rising. Rising, DCPS rising. Uh, we've seen significant progress, and, uh, and so we have uh, a fresh start, we have a whole new opportunity, but it's an opportunity that's building on all of the progress that we've been making. So I'm excited about it. My daughter's not as excited, you know, she's... She'll be excited tomorrow. She'll be excited tomorrow, <laughs> yes. She's in DCPS in high school, uh, she'd rather sleep in, but uh, this really is uh, very exciting, and I think this is a great initiative, what we're doing here, so thank you all. Thanks, Phil. Okay, who's, who's first? Um, uh, yes, no media questions? I said media. Okay, ma'am, I'll get to you just as soon as we finish with the media questions. You'll be first. Okay, yes, sir. You know, originally, not everybody was on board with, with this idea of empowering uh, you know, men of color. The ACLU had some questions, Mary Jay, Mary Jay as well. I believe Chancellor Henderson, you might have one time said on the Kojo show that, in fact, you were going to accept female applications for the school. Did, did I hear that correctly? Did that, did you tell me, did any we did not. We don't. We did not have any female applicants for the for this school. And we've been in conversations with the office of the attorney general, who has, of course, opined on this and supported our ability to do this. And they have been working on our behalf with the ACLU to help them understand why this school at this particular time, and then what our further plans are for girls. As I've explained on multiple occasions, we're not a one size fits all school district. Just because something might work for some of our young people, it doesn't mean that it works for all of our young people. And in the same way that we conceived of this, we are looking at the data around our girls. They have some different challenges and we want to design the right set of strategies for our girls and not just stuff them in the boys box. So stay tuned, you'll see more on empowering women of color mm -hmm. shortly. Can I follow up uh, on the uniform, which fairly sharp looking uniform, can you tell me about like the logistics, the finances of that? Does the school pay for that? Do the families have to pay for that? And no, nope, absolutely. So we raised some philanthropic dollars to support our uniforms, but at all of our schools, we provide uniforms for our young people if they can't afford it. Um, so we have a uniform policy across the district. On, on this one, we used our uniforms as an enrollment incentive. And so if people enrolled early, they were able to get free uniforms. That's a tactic that we've used at a number of our other schools, and it's been very successful. How many applicants did you have for this incoming freshman class? We had about 150 applicants, and we ended up with 110. We have 110 young people who matriculated. When does the application process start for the next class? For next year, it'll be uh, when the lottery starts, March-ish, February, March-ish. Say it again. How much did the renovation of the building That's a good question. Greer, do you know? $58 million for the reno. It's a phased renovation. So this renovation consists of the first floor of the academic wing and the first floor of the other wing, which includes a fellowship hall and cafeteria. Um, and then further, you'll see the upper floors being renovated and then the gym and the auditorium. So 58 is just what's done already? Yes. having for this particular year. Yeah, I'm going to invite Dr. Williams up to talk about the programs that will be in place for this year. Are you, are you asking about activities or different programs? Academics and extracurriculars. So this year uh, we're a ninth grade academy program. Uh, that is pretty standard across most of our comprehensive high schools uh, where we are really doubling up on uh, English and language arts, and so we're double blocking that class because our focus is on literacy this year. Uh, we hope to have a wide variety of activities and programs. Uh, we hope to have some non-traditional sports as well as traditional sports. None of them is, are, are set in stone because we want to give the Kings the opportunity to express what they're interested in. Uh, so we have a policy here that if, you, if the Kings can find five, five, five individuals who are interested in a program and somebody to sponsor them, they can have that activity in the school. And so this is going to be something that's going to be ongoing. Uh, I'm not going to give details because right now we're, that's still a work in progress. 
Is it just ninth grade? It's just ninth grade this year, and we'll grow it every year. Um, next year, we'll take another set of ninth graders, then it'll be tenth graders, and we'll move it up. I have a question for the mayor. I remember uh, when you uh, when you gave your inaugural address. This was uh, the topic, or one of the topics that you. It was. Um, tell us about it. What was the point of a school like this, in your view? Why do you need this kind of school? It's interesting that you mentioned that because I was thinking about those remarks on my way over here. And um, I think, I don't think I talked specifically about a school then, but what I talked about was a focus on making sure we're investing in our boys and young men. I think when you look across the District of Columbia, um, if we have a group of, of people that are very vulnerable, it's our boys and young men. Uh, and that's why I've been focused on 16 to 24 year olds and expanding our job opportunities. Uh, we're very focused on all our safety initiatives, making sure um, that we're disrupting um, a pipeline that has our kids going from school, neighborhoods, uh, and in some kind of um, you know, public safety environment. We want them to go to school, to college, and career, and that is our focus. Uh, so it's a lot of things that we do across all the clusters of our government to support what the chancellor is talking about um, with this school so that we're providing more opportunities. This is what we know. Uh, we know that productive, strong young men are, you know, when they're a force in their families. Um, and if we are investing in them, in them early, uh, we will have less interventions to do with families down the line. Yep, this young lady was first in the pink. Yeah, one second, I, I told, I promised this young lady that she'd be first. Thank you so much. I want to say something real fast and quick. Yes, ma'am. I love to see the first in this building, it's an empty building. I love to see the community more involved, and I'm going to say what I have to say there. I'm going to tell you from the bottom of my heart. You can do all you want to do and can do, but without the help of a lot of these people in the community, especially, I'm going to fight. I have a problem with the AMC committee. I don't pay website. I pay taking a note out and putting it in people's door. We should have seen more people and they would have had a better understanding as to why we opened up with the first floor only the ninth grade so they wouldn't be arguing about how much longer is it going to be for the completion of this old building. How much money? My other problem, and I'm going to give it to you and I know something's going to be done. I am sick and tired of free parking on 48th Street. Okay. Every morning at 5 o'clock, we live around here, I've been here 48 years. Okay. I cannot park on the line. There's no way to park. They need to stop parking. You're talking about safety for our children and so forth. Okay. Let's make it safe. Okay. Move okay. these cars. On 48th also, Street? 48th, right down the corner here. Okay. And also, I want to see speed bumps. The 1,000 block, the 1,100 block, and the 1,200 block. I'm tired of AMC people sitting on it behind doing nothing. Okay. I'm not an AMC committee. Now, you know there's an election. In November oh, for ANC. Oh, but hold up, hold up. Yeah. But before, yeah. where's Wendell? Where's my team? Wendell, where's Team Ward Wendell, 7? Wendell, Come here. here. You see this young man? Oh, that's okay. All right. So this, this we gonna get on. We gonna get on parking. <laughs> He's in charge. Okay. With parking. And uh, it, is, it is a very reasonable question you asked about, about the building. So let me address that. Okay. Uh, and because we have a number of schools that instead of doing the entire school building, we're doing them in phases. I love to do the whole thing, but the, you know, that council, they only give me so much money. <laughs> No, in all seriousness, uh, this is a the economical way for us to get ready. We can't use the whole building right now because we decided with this school, like we have with some others, that we're going to do it one grade at a time. So that gives us the opportunity to continue the building. Well, and I think that we have the properly budgeted for the remainder of the two phases already in our budget, and so we'll proceed that way. And so we'll get we'll do a better job of getting the word out to the community. But this is the way we could get open. You know, and the chancellor would tease me because I kind of had the same reaction. I was at Ron Brown last year, and I said, Chancellor, we're going to open next year? She said, yeah, we're going to open next year. I said, next year? 
And she kept saying yes, because this is, we need to get this school open and we'll deal with the next two floors um, as we are ready for them. And so that's, that's, what, that's what we're going to do. So around free parking, around speed bumps, we'll talk to the neighborhood about speed bumps. I got it. Got, I got it. Got to move now, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you standing right here because I don't know anything about what, about what you're proposing, but I'll look into that. And I want to thank you. And thank you, dear. You Why are you talking? Yes, ma'am. Clear to this community and so yes. forth. Safety. Y'all have taken that into consideration. That was one of the biggest concerns is why is the school opening and with the rest of it not being worked. Safety. I got and, it. And they will be having a meeting, a walkthrough at some time next month or whatever. With the Absolutely. Community. Principal Williams is in right. charge of that, and he's in charge of the school climate. Uh, and making sure that the, the children here are, are going to be fantastic and have a wonderful school environment. So thank you. Yes, uh, I'm going to take a couple more. Yes, sir. Tell me. Hold up. Tell me. Tell me. No, 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 no. no tell me. Look at me. Uh, brother Penny. Yes, and Brother Penny. Of other brother, Brother Tony Johnson. Tony brother Johnson. Penny, I know them. The number of black men out here meeting our young king because we just acknowledge him yes. stand up. Yes, Penny and Tony Johnson stand up and be acknowledged. Thank you very much, sir. Good to see you. One, two. Yes, sir. Father of one of the kids that goes here, and we've been reading uh, together the media releases about the school, and one of the things that my son is asking me about is, why is this school being portrayed, because it's in Northeast and because it's men of color, why are they being portrayed as either uh, uh, high-risk children or, uh, uh, you know, low-income, this is like this is a project school. I mean, most of the media releases, they're talking about, well, you know, some of our problem children, our problem black kids in low income communities, which has nothing to do with this at all. So how are the how is the media sort of correcting that? Well, thank you for calling that to the media's attention. Um, we, we don't write the stories, but we give them all the good news. Uh, and the good news is we want to be focused on the needs of, of our children. And as the chancellor has said, uh, she doesn't think there's a one-fits-all approach and that the, the learning here and the program here will be focused on um, advancing boys. Yeah, I just want to add, I was watching the news last night and I saw people sort of, I think, disparagingly displaying what this amazing project is. And I've said it before and I'm going to say it again, haters are going to hate. <laughs> but it's up to us to teach our young kings that they are not at risk. In fact, we're making sure that they have the kind of education so that they don't end up at risk. And what I would say to you is invite the news people to come back and see. What Dr. Williams didn't tell you, I was sitting in his office waiting for the thing to start and I'm looking at all of the possible activities, right? And there's crew and rugby and lacrosse and things that people don't think that our kids can do. But we want to expose them to every opportunity so that just like in the Olympics, we can see these young people defying expectations on the world stage. That's what this thing is all about. Some people are going to talk about it. We're going to be about it. Mm -hmm. Last question. Is it for me? Question for me? Tell me. Okay. I want to ask you is that, uh, and to you, Sam, I just want to thank everybody for coming. The parents involved. I think there's more communication. That's another issue that needs to be. The parents know what's happening in networking. And then also, um, PTA. PTA is so important. So, how are you going to work to make sure that we have a, a good organization and a good commitment with our parents and the fathers of parents? Because that's important. So we need to make sure that, that, that that's connected for both the males and the females. Yeah, I mean, I think we, we started this, I, I, I introduced the people or asked them to raise their hands who are part of the community cabinet, many of whom are parents here. We believe that in order for this school to be great, we have to do it with parents. Dr. Williams has been out in the community. He will be out in the community. Most of all, you'll see these young men out in the community. They're going to come and help you, un help you understand what's going on.
going on and invite you in with them. Um, my Office of Family and Community Engagement has been doing a lot of work. Um, I see Sharona Robinson in the back and Josephine Robinson, um, but they've been doing a lot of work to strengthen our PTAs because we believe that when we have strong PTAs in our school, we have stronger schools. So we're committed to continuing to work on that and thank you for raising that really important issue. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.